so this is the third part in our video series on doing the inverse kinematics of a six degree of freedom industrial robot so in the first two parts we tried the forward kinematics and i talked about the four steps that are needed and we got to the third step which was this one right here and we said that these when we reach this step on the right hand side we have this matrix which is a matrix of numbers and on the left hand side we have these homogeneous transforms which contain the joint parameters from theta 1 all the way through theta 6 so this is from theta 1 to theta 6 if you want to just quickly refresh what i mean by this let me go up and show you so my this is this one right here and these ones is this one right here which has got theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 all the way to theta 6 and i told you that if it was easy what we would have done is we would just have equated these two forward kinematics all of this with this and we would have solved for theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 theta 5 and theta 6 however it becomes quite difficult when trying to do it practically so what we do is we employ a very clever trick in order to understand what a clever trick is let me draw out the robot again so what happens is generally for a six degree of freedom industrial robot the first three rotations are responsible for the position of the robot that is how we think and rest of the rotations are only responsible for the orientation of the robot so what do we mean right now let us dive uh, focus our attention on this ro robot right here and let's see so i know that my first rotation is this right my second rotation is about this and my third rotation is about this right so my three rotations what they do is they define the position of the robot how do they define the position of the robot because you see once i do the three rotations then this point right here this point this point is only dependent on these three rotations only and the next three rotations which is the rotation defined by this this and this all it would do is it would change the orientation of this and possibly make this part rotate down come down right here but the position of this point right here is going to remain the same and this point if you recall from our previous videos this point is what we call the wrist of the robot the wrist point right so the wrist of the robot so what we do is the first three rotations are responsible for the position of the wrist if i am more particular with the wording so the position of the wrist so the first three rotations are responsible for the position of the wrist and the next three rotations or however many the rotations are they are responsible for the orientation of the end effector now just just keep this in mind so what i've done is i've written this again and i just want to show you like so so this represents my rotation about the z-axis this represents the rotation about the y-axis this one and this represents again the rotation about the y-axis this one right And now what we do is we get clever right here and what we do is we are like okay if we know that the first three rotation first three rotations define only the position of the wrist then why don't we multiply that this entire thing by a vector such that we take it from so what we do is we take it from this point right here and take it back to this point so we figure out what vector would be needed to be multiplied to this homogeneous bunch of homogeneous transforms so that it would take it from here to here and if we go back to our dimension of the robot we see that this is 72 so what we do is we take it back by 72 and now you see that when we are at this point right here and if we need to go back 
by 72 it has to be negative 72 which is going in the negative direction in z right not in x or y and that is what we do so let me just quickly repeat what i just said it might become a little um, complex if you are hearing it for the first time so let me just repeat all of what i just said so what i said was this so what happens in a six degree of industrial six degree of freedom industrial robot is the first three rotations are always responsible for the position of the wrist and all the other rotations are responsible for the orientation what is the wrist wrist is defined as the point where the last three rotation axis of a robot intersect what do i mean so let's start by figuring out what my last three rotation axis are so this is my last rotation let me change a color so that you guys don't get confused so let me pick something that we haven't used yet probably this yep so my last rotation is this and the axis of rotation is this about the zx right right here then my second last rotation is axis y which rotates here and here which is about the y axis and this right here my axis 4 is about the z axis again so i can say that it all intersects at this point right here which is like right of kind of here right and this is the location of my wrist so we are saying that the first three rotations are responsible for the placement of the wrist and the next three rotations are responsible for the orientation only of the end effector so from wrist to the end effector the last three rotations are responsible to take it from the wrist to the end effector and define its orientation hope it makes more sense now but if you have still have any queries just put them down in the comments and i can explain this again so what now we are trying to do is now that we know that this point the wrist the location of the wrist is only defined by the three rotation axis so we get clever and what we do is we multiply out this with a vector such that we take it from this point all the way back to this point and now we know that since we are facing positive z in this direction so in order to take it back we have to go in negative z and that was minus 72 in z and that is what we do we might have both of the sides by minus 72 and the beauty of doing this is it completely eliminates the last three rotation angles so it eliminates theta 4 theta 5 and theta 6 why because you see that this point wrist has got no relation whatsoever to theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6 and that is the clever technique that we use for industrial robots and once we do it we get to this very simple matrix and on the right hand side we all have num we have numbers here and now we can easily solve them and get our theta 1, theta 2 and theta 3 you can solve them in a bunch of different ways the way that I typically do it is I take two equations and I divide them out just I have done here sorry yeah I divide them out I divide equation by one by equation two and I find out the values of theta one notice that I say values of theta one because I because when I divide it out I cancel out this with this but I don't know yet if it is positive or negative since it can be both so I take on both values and it gives me theta 1 to be either 35 degrees or minus 145 degrees and similarly we can solve for theta 2 and theta 3 in the same manner again for theta 2 you are going to get two different values for each value of theta 1 so we are going to get something like this so we are going to have two values of theta 1 then for each theta 1 we, have, we are going to get two values of theta 2 and then one value of theta 3 now how do we proceed with this now what we have is we have three we have the first three joint parameters known so we know theta 1 theta 2 and theta 3 now all that we do not know are the last three rotations which are are wrist rotations right so how do we figure them out 
the process of figuring them out is pretty simple. So now we have got theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. I just did this out again. And what we have is we have theta 1 was here, theta 2 was here, theta 3 was part of this. So we have all of this and we do not have this. This has theta 4, this has theta 5, this has theta 6. This is all numbers. So what we do is we take everything that we know to one side. So we take all of this to one side and now this all becomes numbers and now we just use the classical ro robot risk inverse kinematics to get theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6. If you don't know how to do this, we have made a video on this uh, like 3-4 videos ago. So I am going to put a link to that in the description as well. So you can check it out as to how we can solve the robotic risk of the inverse kinematics of robotic risk. And once we do it, we get the solutions and the solutions are going to be in this manner. So we already got to this point till here and then once we solve the robotic risk, you guys already know that we get we get two different solutions for a robotic risk and since we have already have different paths, each path would lead to two different solutions. So in total, we would have eight sets of solutions, eight different sets of solutions. So this one would represent one set of solution. That similarly, this one uh, from here to let's say here would represent another set of solution. This one to here would represent another set of solution and so forth. So we have got eight sets of solutions right here. But if you recall towards the start of the video, we saw that the product specification manual specifically said that the robot can only rotate by this much degrees in this direction, right? So by taking in this into account, we get to know that only five of those solutions are attainable by the robot and the rest three are not attainable. So my inverse kinematics was, would consist of five different solutions. What that would mean is if I use any of those solutions, let me show you what those solutions are. So these are my five different solutions. Now, so this is theta one, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6 moving forward. Theta 1, theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta 5 and theta 6. And if I give my robot the command for these specific angles for the, for the motors, then what would happen is my robot would look identical because it would like this is the actual robot that we were solving for and this is the desired position and orientation so my position and orientation are going to look the same for all of these five different unique set of solutions because that is what inverse kinematics is it gives you the it gives like we started with the position and orientation and we were solving back backwards so all of these are meant to give you the same position and orientation of the robot but it would just mean that the joints have rotated in a different manner. I can just show you real quickly what that means. So here is the robot right here and I can just rotate it. And this right here is my first configuration. My second one is this. So we can see all that happened was this part, it twisted, right? So this part twisted and this part is also twisted. So now it is minus 170 degrees. And now this again, there are, there is some twisting going on, but the end point always remains at the same position and orientation. And that is what inverse kinematics is. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions whatsoever regarding this video or any of the previous videos, put them in the comments below and I make sure that I always get back to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I have a great time making these videos and I really enjoy when you guys ask questions regarding these videos and when you watch these videos. So thank you once again for watching and as always see you in the next video.